All right, let's roll in. We are rolling. All right, everybody. Let's give everyone a little time to jump on here. My name is Jesse. You're on my Painting with Jesse page on Facebook and on my Painting with Jesse YouTube channel. We're going to give it a few minutes here. I'm on a little early like I like to do so that it gives people time to find the feed. Uh, I know sometimes people have a little bit of a tough time. But anyway, as soon as I get some people on here, I'd like to see if somebody can give me a sound check. Make sure that you can hear me okay. All right. Looks like people are starting to find the feed. First person that jumps on, please give me a sound check. Let me know that you can hear me. Say, hey, Jesse, we can hear you okay. Or, Jesse, there's no sound. Okay. All right. All right. Debbie Sanderson, how's it going? 11 p.m. in the UK. Woo! And she says, I can hear you fine. Fantastic. Thank you, Julie Cox. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my page here on Facebook. Facebook uh, page, Painting with Jesse. YouTube is also Painting with Jesse. We are live streaming to both platforms today. You can catch the live feed on either one of those. On YouTube, during the live, you can back it up, you can pause it, etc. You cannot do that on Facebook. Facebook does not allow you to manipulate the live stream. You have to watch it as it happens, okay? Just something for you guys to know if you're new to either one of the platforms where you watch Painting with Jesse. Most of you would probably benefit by watching it on YouTube simply because you have those extra abilities. However, each one, either one is perfectly fine. Also, the live stream is being recorded, so as soon as it's over, it will be available in its recorded form on both Facebook and on YouTube. So if you're not able to paint with me today, or you may be only able to catch part of this, you will be able to go back and watch this at a later time. All right, what's happening, Lisa Houston and Heather Alvarez, Nancy Davidson, how's it going, Nancy? Lynn Brown, how are you, Shelly? Lyles Freeman, Tammy Estevez, how's it going, everybody? Fantastic, so like I said, we're on a little bit early. Got about four minutes left before we, we uh, actually officially start. Again, I ask that if you see anybody asking questions in the comments that you know the answer to, please help me by answering. I don't always get to see all of the questions that come up. The most common question you're probably going to see is, hey, is this being recorded? And can we watch it at a later time? And the answer to that is yes. The uh, recorded version will be available both on Facebook and on YouTube, okay? There you go, Tabitha. Sounds good. Heather Moody, it's being recorded. Thought about your middle man or your little man, I think is what she meant. Looking forward to doing it a little later, says Louisa Gill. Fantastic. So, and then of course, the other thing is I ask that you send me pictures of your paintings when you're all done. I like to share those with my groups. Everybody likes to see how creative everyone else gets. It also encourages others by watching what you guys do. So if you, so if you can, when you're all done, please send me a picture of your masterpieces on Facebook or, uh, sorry, Facebook by messenger, or you can email me to paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. And I would greatly appreciate that. How's it going, Adriana Mendez? And then there's Meg harris Pele. How's it going? Kumari and Kai. Haven't seen you guys in a minute. Thank you for coming and hanging out today. Let's see. Clara Wigman says, here with two great kids, Jackson and Kinnerlay in St. Louis, Missouri. Fantastic. Yes, please let me know where you're painting from and who you're painting with. I have to imagine we got, that we have a bunch of kiddos painting along today, which is fantastic. I really love uh, doing painting sessions with kids, uh, but uh, please let me know who's hanging out today in the comments so I can give you a shout out. Okay, we got about two minutes before we get started, and I just want to remind everyone that I'm painting with Jesse, especially if you're new here, we have about a, a little over 100 uh, previous art tutorials that are available for you to watch at your convenience. I have an archive both on the Facebook page or Facebook channel and on the Facebook, Facebook YouTube channel and on the Facebook page. Uh, if you go to the top on the Facebook page under the live tab, you'll see all the previous recordings. And once we get started here at 3 o'clock, I'll go over and do a quick I'll share my screen and show you guys how to access that. But what kind of paintings will you will you find there? Well, you'll find something like this cute little llama. We got a we got a couple of pair of llamas that you can find on there to paint. 
I teach you how to draw and how to paint them. We got little octo octopi. Okay, uh, you can go in there and paint. Also, we got Lilo. I believe we did this one. We did a Lilo. Maybe it's not this one, but there should be a Lilo video in there as well. Stitch. I'm sorry, not Lilo. Stitch. Okay, Stitch is in there somewhere. Again, this is all in the archives, in the old archives under Painting with Jesse, stuff that we've done over the past year. Okay, you can go find these, um, you know, you can go find these in the archives. Let's see, Rosemary Alonzo, how's it going? Says, hi, Jesse, not painting today. Cute dino, have fun, everyone. You got it, Rose. Thank you for stopping by and saying hello. And then we got uh, a little bee and a flower. So there's probably about 30, 40 kids paintings that you can go back and access. Something that's like this little Valentine's cacti. It doesn't have to be Valentine's, right? It doesn't have to be Valentine's Day to make something cute like this. And then we also have a cute little panda, cute little panda bear. So all of these paintings that I just showed you, like I said, are available in the Painting with Jesse library here on Facebook. Most of these are also on the YouTube page. So when you guys have a moment, you guys go check those out. There's about 100 videos, about 30 to 40 of them are for kids. And then the other, the other 70 or so are more adult oriented, meaning there's more, they're more complex. They take longer to produce, et cetera. But how do you find those? Let me show you guys really quickly. I'm going to share my screen with you for a moment. Share screen. Let's see. I'm getting good at this now. Facebook share. Give me one second, everyone bear with me while I get this going. I need to make sure there we go. All right. We can see it. So here's my main painting with Jesse Page on Facebook. I'm just going to take a minute here to show you where you would find the old archives, the videos of all the 100, 100 plus sessions that we've done over the past 14 months. So here's my main painting with Jesse Page. If you scroll down a little bit here at the top, you're going to see these tabs, home, live, videos, groups, and more. Here under videos, actually under the live tab is probably easier. Click on that. It's going to take you to the page where it's going to show you one, this is us right now, right? We're live. But below that, past live videos. If you scroll down, there's a whole bunch of videos on here where I teach you how to draw and how to paint. About, like I said, about 35-ish or so are kids' paintings. We got Charlie Brown over here. We got, uh, we got uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, some of these are both kids and adults, right? Both, uh, I get a lot of adults doing a lot of these sessions. But um, there's another Charlie Brown one, uh, another another Nightmare Before Christmas that was around Christmas. Over here we got Mike Wazowski from Monster Zinc. We got um, Miguel from Coco. We got, there we go. There's there's Stitch right there. We had a Mommy and Me little Orca, a pair of Orca paintings where I teach you again how to draw and how to paint both of them. We got the we got Dante from the movie Coco also. Um, we got Bob the Minion. So there's a whole bunch of of these paintings. If you just scroll down, you're going to find a whole bunch of them. Again, that's on the main painting with Jesse page at the top. You got the live tab that you would click on and it's going to show you all of those. Okay. They're also, most of those are also on the YouTube channel. So if you guys are interested, go check those out. All right. Enough with screen sharing. Let's get going with today's event. So welcome everyone. Thank you all for being with me here today. We're going to be drawing and painting a cute little dinosaur. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to draw and paint the process will take us about 45 minutes to an hour. If that's a little too long for some of your kiddos, I totally understand. Uh, stick around and join us for as long as you can. If you cannot complete the session with us today, the video is being recorded and you can come back and watch it tonight, tomorrow, etc. Okay, so don't stress about having to finish within our uh, session today. You can come on back and do this later. Okay, so what colors am I going to be using today? I'm, I'm going to be painting with acrylic paints. I'm only using the three primary colors. You can use whatever colors you've got. I am going to be teaching you guys how to, how to create some colors by mixing colors today. But the three primary colors that I'll be using are yellow. There's only three primary colors in existence. Yellow, there's blue, and there is red. With these three colors plus white, okay, white is not a primary color, but white along with those three colors, we're going to mix the colors that you see on the dinosaur here. So I'll be mixing a little bit of blue and some white to make the light blue. So really quickly on that note, white and black are used to 
change the value of a color. The value of a color simply refers to how light or how dark a color is. So I'm going to add white to blue to make the light blue on the dinosaur. I'm going to mix yellow and blue to make the green of the leaves. Okay, and maybe I'll add a little bit of white to lighten up the color a little. And then we're going to mix red and yellow to make orange. The orange and the green in the painting are considered secondary colors because you mix two primary colors to create them. Okay, so enough about that. Nothing too fancy, nothing too heavy or too crazy. I don't want to, you know, get too caught up in the fundamentals, but that's what we're going to be working on today. First, we're going to draw, and I'm going to be using a, a chalk, a piece of purple chalk to draw mine. Draw, uh, chalk is easy to erase. You very simply, uh, using a paper towel, wet paper towel, you can take off any chalk lines that you don't like. makes it easy to erase. Uh, I'm going to be doing the painting today on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. It's the same as what's on the original. Some of you are going to be using mixed media paper, uh, canvas board, wood board, etc. You will be able to do this on whatever you want. It's entirely up to you. I have a water cup here, rinse cup, basically in between steps. I do rinse out my brushes in here. So I've got some water in this cup. Whoops, almost spilled it. Actually, I did spill a little tiny bit of it. Then I have three brushes. Whatever brushes you have are perfectly fine. Work with what you've got. But everything that you see on this painting, I'm going to be doing with this one inch flat brush. Okay. One inch flat brush. You see that right there. This is mostly going to be used for the background. Then I've got a number four little flat brush here. Well, uh, this I'll be using to paint on the inside of the dinosaur, maybe in here on the spikes, uh, here on the circles, some of the smaller detail stuff. Okay. Then I've got a zero round brush, little tiny, skinny, pointy thing. Okay. That I'm going to be using to do a small detail like the eyes, outlining. Uh, you know, maybe some of the smaller stuff, like the little points here at the top, coloring those in. So these three brushes is all we need, are all we need. Again, use whatever you've got. You're going to be okay. Just uh, make, make do with what you got. Then I've got paper towels, very important. Paper towels, uh, you know, help clean up many, any messes. It also helps clean my brushes in between uh, uses. The way this works, if you're new to the page, I outline a step over here and I give you a couple of moments to catch up, to do it on your end. Then we move on to the next step. If you guys have any questions, comments, et cetera, please put them in the comments section. I'll get to them as soon as I can. If I miss your question, you'll see me when I come back over and start looking at the comments. Uh, when I do that, it's your cue to answer, ask your question, et cetera. Okay. All right, everybody, let's get going here. Let me switch screens here. There we go. So, once again, don't forget, please let me know Let me know your name, where you're painting from, and who you're painting with. We're going to get drawing here pretty quickly. Now, you guys might be able to see I have an erased, I have a little bit of, a, I have some pencil lines here that I erased. I did, originally I had drawn a little Among Us character back a few weeks ago when I was going to paint an Among Us character on here. That's what you see there in the background. I erased it. But I still have a little bit left over. But all right, let me turn on a little dinosaur towards me. Anytime, now I know some of you guys are using the PDF, the stencil uh, that I made available. So maybe you've already got your dinosaur traced on, or if you haven't got your dinosaur traced on, this is when you want to do it. As we're drawing this freehand, you want to trace it on. I would recommend, even if you're not comfortable drawing, that you practice this drawing. You can always come back and practice later. You can practice it as many times as you want. Times as you want. Drawing, just like with everything else, the more you do it, the better and more quickly you'll get at the, the more quickly you'll get better at it, but you will improve over time. All right. What's happening. Toby from Alabama. If you do not have chalk Shivani, if you don't have chalk, use a pencil. Okay. Use a pencil with an eraser. All you need is a basic pencil and eraser. Chalk just makes it a little bit easy, easier to erase with, to work with. Okay. But chalk and pencil is perfectly fine. If you're using a pencil, make sure you do really light, pencil lines. To, so it makes it easy to erase. So for example, let's say I've got a pencil line right there. I can erase it. Okay. But the darker it is, the harder it is to erase. So just that's a tip on using a pencil and eraser. Okay. So thank you so much for your comment. I forgot to mention all that, but all right, let's look at our little dinosaur, whatever surface you're drawing this on. The first thing I always do when I go to paint or draw, I look at my surface. I want to make sure that I leave enough room 
for everything, right? So I've got a little tail back here that's got to sit somewhere in here. I've got the neck and the head that has to sit up here somewhere. Um, the body's going to be here in the center somewhere. So anytime I'm going to draw something, I always kind of do a quick uh, assessment. I'll look at my paper. I'll look at what I'm drawing and decide how big everything's going to be. Just kind of really quickly give myself an idea. So we're going to start with the body in here. Okay. And again, I'm using chalk. You want to make sure everything that you're doing is really light so you can erase. I'm going to make mine a little bit darker so that uh, it's easier for you guys to follow along and sorry, easier, easy for you to see my lines. We're going to start with the little hump here on the back. This back is somewhere down here towards the middle of my canvas. So this little hump right here is about, about where the middle of the canvas is. And it's slightly, if you're looking at the canvas, it's not here in the middle. It's slightly back uh, towards the right a little bit. So here we go. Little hump. Okay, right over the top. And at first, I'll make my lines nice and light. Okay, I'll take a look at it and then I'll go ahead and make it darker. So that's my approach. I always start really light. Once I like my line, I make it a little darker for you guys to be able to see it. Ketsia from Puerto Rico. How's it going, Ketsia? Thank you for joining in today. Meg Ann, how are you? Jeremiah, what's going on? Toby in Alabama. I think I already said hi to, hi to Toby, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you again for joining in. But all right, we got the top part of our dinosaur. We're going to go in with the neck. Okay, neck comes right down in here. We're going to curve it up just a little bit. We've got a little curve. Here's the nice thing about chalk, just to demonstrate. Let's say that I make a line that I don't like. It doesn't make sense or it just doesn't look right. I take a little paper towel. I just dip it into a little bit of water. I just dip it in my water cup. Don't need a lot of water, just a little bit. And I can come in here and I can do this. Look how easy that comes off. Okay, that's the beauty of working with chalk, uh, especially on canvas. But let's put that back. All right, so back to the neck. We've got this little curve right here. Okay, now we want to go up with the neck. Go slowly. You don't want to go too fast because if you go too high, right, you don't want to go too, too high. Decide how high your neck is going to go. And then we're going to curve in over the top of the head. This is almost like we're making a circle, like half of a circle. We're just coming over the top. Now, a couple of things. Everyone's dinosaur is going to look a little different. So I don't want you worrying about trying to make it exactly like mine. I want you guys to be happy creating something. If it turns out a little bit different, perfect. You're making it unique. Okay, there's the top of my dinosaur's head. Now, right here, okay, right here about where, the, where that point is right there, I'm just going to come back inwards a little. Create the little mouth. Goes up. Curls up just a bit. Okay, there's our mouth. Now, I can Kinney, how's it going? Good morning all the way to Australia. Denise Williams says, my grandson loves dinosaurs. Fantastic. Who doesn't love, love dinosaurs? I grew up uh, reading all kinds of dinosaur books, learning how to draw dinosaurs when I was a little, a little kid. Love dinosaurs. All right, so right here from the bottom, we're going to go, we're going to draw the lower part of the mouth, and it just goes back like that. Again, don't stress too much. Some of your dinosaurs are going to be big. They're going to be skinny. They might be a little chubby. It's all good. Maybe some of the necks on some of your dinosaurs are going to be really long, short. There's all kinds of different dinosaurs. Now, once we've done the bottom part of the mouth, we're going to go into the neck, back to the neck. We draw a line that comes down. Now, this line's going to come down. So you're going to decide how far down is your dinosaur going to, going to be. Is it is it a big you know, kind of a, a, a bigger dinosaur? Is it a skinnier dinosaur? Kind of up to you. When you come down the front, you're going to start curving it back. Okay. And we're going to stop about right there. Okay. I'm going to take a moment here just to fix this line right here. So again, I want to erase a little bit. So I dip my paper towel into the water and I just come right in here, remove it. No problem. Okay. Nice and easy. And we get back to our chalk. There we go. Just wanted to clean it up a little bit. So right here, this line is this, where this stops right there. We got this foot that's on the far side of our dinosaur. We're not worried about that right now. We're going to go into this foot first. Before we do this one, we're going to make this one. So right here, this line right in here is what we're going to start with. And that line starts right up here somewhere. 
Okay, drops down like that, and then comes down, scoops out underneath. Whoops, a little too far, and that's okay. If I wanted to leave, have a wider foot, that's okay. But for my little dinosaur, I'm going to leave it about right there, and it's going to go back up. Goes up, curves back. Okay, there's the bottom of my, of my little dinosaur foot. And I'll look at it, right? You always want to take a look at your, your, your progress. Take a little step back. I always like to take a couple of feet, maybe two, three feet away, stand a little bit of a distance away, and I look at it. Make sure that everything's looking good. Making sure that everything looks the way I want it. So we got this foot in place. Now we're going to go to the, to the belly. So this line, if you imagine, it goes behind the foot, and it's going to come out over here somewhere. Again, this line comes behind the foot, starts over here somewhere, and it comes in, scoops back like that. Now, I don't want to go too far back, okay, because I want to, uh, because I want to, you know, I don't want my foot way back here, my, my other leg back here. Now, watch this, guys. My hump is a little too big. I want a little bit of a smaller hump, personally. Right? I want to have a little bit of a smaller hump, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, going to make this smaller. Now that I've got the bottom part of my dinosaur, there's nothing wrong with erasing. Lots of people don't like to erase. It's all part of drawing. That's how you, how you make co uh, corrections, how you make things look better. Okay, so I'm just going to go like this, make it a little smaller. There we go. I like that better. Okay, so again... Drawing involves making corrections. If you don't like something, there's no problem with erasing it. Okay, so there we go. Just had to make that little adjustment. Now, this other foot, right up in here. Okay, it goes like this. Comes down. So again, we're working on the back foot here. Not the one on the other side, just the back foot. Uh, sorry, the, the foot on this side. The leg. Okay, it goes like that. Goes back up and then curves in, or curves out a little bit, okay? But all right, guys, take about a minute to catch up with that. Let's see if we have any questions or any comments that we need to look at. So if you have a question, make sure you, you can ask it right now. I'm looking at the, at the comments pop up, okay? And then don't forget, I'd like to remind everyone please make sure you send me a picture of your painting when you're all done, okay? If you're painting with me on Facebook, you can send it to me via Messenger. Parents, uh, kiddos, if there's any kiddos painting by yourselves, make sure you get your parents' permission first. Ask your parent for help uh, when sending your pictures over, okay? Send me pictures only with your parents' permission. But I'd like to see your paintings. I'd like to share them with everyone. When I get a whole bunch of your paintings together, then I post them to my Facebook and to my Instagram, just kind of showing everyone, hey, check out what uh, all these artists painted with me today or yesterday. Usually, usually I post them the next day. So again, if you're on Facebook, send them to me via Messenger here on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, then you can email them to, uh, to me directly on paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Okay? So the back leg. Yeah, I can do the back leg again. Somebody's requesting the back leg. Okay? So I'm going to just take a quick moment to erase it and just redo it. I'm only erasing it to demonstrate it again, okay? So let's say we don't have the back leg. Just taking my piece, my, my paper towel, you know, a little bit of water on there. I got my belly right here, right? So the back leg, again, we're talking about this leg, the leg that's on this side. We're going to start here at the top. We're going to curve a line down like this, okay? And it's going to come down into the foot. And then goes back up and then back up to the top. Now, these connect, right? We don't want to leave a little gap right there. So there's that foot. Now, before I do the other two little feet, let's go into the tail because the tail is pretty simple, pretty easy to do. From right here, I'm going to curve up. Okay. Let's see how big all everybody's little tail is going to be a little longer, right? A little different. So there's our tail there. Now it's going to scoop back down on the other side. And the idea is that this little line here connects with this one. So you might have to make an adjustment over here to kind of make have a little bit of a flow there. There's a flow between this line here. If you imagine, it goes behind the foot, behind the leg, and connects on the other side. So I'm just going to erase this little 
smudge up on top just to make keep it a little cleaner. Remember, a little bit of water in your paper towel will will take care of that. There we go. All right. So we got the front foot over on this side. We're going to start with this line right there. Okay, that line. And that little line starts about right here somewhere. It's going to make a little line like, whoops. Yeah, I could, I could do it like that, like it's taking a bigger step. Or we can fix that and just make it a little less. So a little line comes down like this. Okay. Then goes forward. And then goes back up. Our little dinosaur is taking a little step right there, or maybe it's, or maybe it's just standing there, right, with its with its little feet spread further apart. Back here, we can start. So this just want to show you guys something here. This bottom part of the line, bottom part of the part of the foot, is a little bit higher than this one. Okay, this one because of our perspective, this one's a little bit lower. This one's a little bit higher. So right here, when you start that bottom part, that's what we're going to start with. Starts a little higher, right there. And then it goes up nice and easy. Okay. So there's that. Now, take a little step back. Like I said, always take a little step back. Look at your whatever it is, your, your creation. Make sure you, you like what you've got. If you don't, then you make corrections. Okay. Again, drawing involves making corrections. I drop my uh, my brushes there. Drawing is about making corrections. Make corrections as you go. Okay, once you're good to go, you look at it and you say, okay, I like what I've got. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and put in the eye. The little We're gonna leave the nostril and the eyebrow till after we've painted everything, but we are gonna go ahead and put in the little eye. Okay, and the little eye is pretty basic. It's like a little, looks like a little oval. Okay, I'll give you guys a close up here of the original, okay. We got a little oval here, a little tiny opening at the top. Of course, we got a little white, a little white reflection on the inside there that we're going to add with white paint later. But for now, we're just going to worry about the the black oval there. And I'm going to put it in with the with the um, chalk. Again, a little oval comes up like this. Okay. Something like that, and I can, I can go ahead and color it in just to make it easier for everyone to see. But there's my, my eye. We'll refine it later. Again, we're going to add the little white reflection in there. We'll do the eyebrow uh, with paint, the nostril with paint. But that's my little dinosaur's close-up. How's it going, Arav and Srishti? How's it going? Thank you for joining in today. Hope you're having some fun. Okay. Now, what's the next step? I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Let's see. We are going to do the palm tree and the stuff in our little dinosaur's mouth later. Okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put in a line across the bottom here by the dinosaur's front foot. Okay. And between the, the feet back here, we're going to come across. This is the floor, the grass that our little dinosaur is walking on. Okay. Whoops. Let me, I just want to adjust it so it's nice and straight. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little, take a little moment here to clean this up. But again, folks, nice and easy. There's our ground. And we are actually ready to paint. Awesome, first time, huh? Fantastic, well, thank you for joining today. Uh, Audrey, this is an 11 by 14 inch canvas, okay? Kinkini, I don't know, did you, oh, I did see it. I did see it, Kinkini, fantastic, fantastic job on the hope tree. While you guys are catching up with that, uh, this is what we painted yesterday. Some of you may have missed this. Now, this is a little, quite a bit more complex than what we're doing today, but this is a little painting I call the hope tree. There's a little tree with a swing in it. Okay, uh, this video tutorial is available for you guys to go back and watch. It's both on Painting with Jesse here on Facebook and on the Painting with Jesse YouTube channel. So if you guys are interested in that, you can go check out the live, the recorded live stream to that. Okay, that's what Kinkini is referring to. I did get that, Kinkini. Thank you so much. It was beautiful. 
Loved it. How's it going, Dua and Aid? Of course. Of course I can, Kinkini. Okay. But all right, guys. Let's work on the background. We're going to... So I mentioned this at the beginning, I believe. You can use whatever colors you'd like for your dinosaur. Okay. I'm going to stick with the original colors that I've got on the original here. I've got yellow for the background. I've got green for the grass and green, of course, in the palm tree um, or big giant fern tree, whatever that may be, big fern plant. Uh, this is back in Jurassic times or Triassic times or whatever, whatever era this dinosaur lived in. Uh, but we got the, the, the leaves on the tree. Then we've got, of course, a light blue dinosaur with orange parts orange little details on there. We're going to be mixing those colors here in just a moment. But first, we're going to start with our yellow. Now, I've got a plate here that I reused. It's an old plate with some dried colors on here. This dark blue that you see here and this black is all dried paint. The colors that you want to concern yourself with are the yellow, red, blue, and white. Again, these are primary colors, the red, blue, uh, sorry, red, blue, and yellow. These are primary colors. White, is a color that I'm gonna be using to change the value of the color, meaning value simply means how light or how dark a color is. But I'm, I'm gonna start with the yellow, okay? What I'm going to do is with my big brush, actually, you know what, no, I'm gonna start with my little brush, okay? I'm going to take some yellow here and I'm gonna bring it over to the side of my plate. I'm gonna dip my brush in my water cup. This little brush, all I'm doing is I dip it into my water cup a couple of times. That water, I, I kind of mix it into my paint here. Not kind of, I do mix it into the paint. Just do this like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, before I start doing the background, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to, I'm going to outline my dinosaur. This just makes it easier for me to paint the background. I'll outline first and then come around and do the rest of the background. Okay, so come across the front of the foot. Then I'm also going to outline the ground here, right? Above that line is going to be all yellow. Okay, let's not forget the center here, the inside. Now my purple chalk is going to mix a little bit with my paint. No big deal. Okay, now I'm going to come around on the other side. Again, I'm outlining first before we start working on that background. And I'm using one of my small brushes. This is my number four flat brush. Okay, there we go. My background or my outlining is done. I'm gonna go and take this brush and I'm just gonna swirl it around in my, in my rinse cup, take out all that paint. I have a separate little tin with water in it that I place my brushes in while, when I'm not using them. So this goes and sits back there. If you're new to painting with acrylic paint, you wanna make sure you don't let that paint dry on your brushes. So always have uh, a little bit of water in a cup or a plate somewhere where you can put those brushes into, some kind of container where you can put those brush brushes in with that water. So here's my big brush. I'm gonna use this big brush. I'm dipping it in water, bringing that water over. I'm gonna use this big brush to paint the rest of the background. So again, a couple of times, just gonna dip that brush into the water, mix that water in nicely with the paint. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start painting with these nice long brush strokes like this. Okay, these long brush strokes help create a nice smooth background. It can be a little tricky to do to continue painting with long brush strokes when you're when you're going around a drawing like we are here with the dinosaur, but we can do it. Here in the front, I'm just coming right up to the edge of the dinosaur like this, right over the outline that I created, and then I paint sideways. I pull the paint to the side. What this does is it allows me, helps me maintain a nice, smooth background. Now, you don't have to have a smooth background. You can have a, a choppy background if you'd like, where you paint in different directions. That's okay, too. But if you want this nice, long, smooth background or nice, smooth background, you want to create this by using these long brush strokes. Okay, so again, I come right up to the edge of my dinosaur and I pull away. Here in between the neck and the back, the little hump, 
I just have to be careful, right? I don't want to paint on the inside of the dinosaur. We are going to outline our dinosaur, so that's going to remove a lot of that purple outline that you see with the chalk. If you did it with pencil or a different colored chalk, when we outline it, and we are going to be mixing that color to create that, unless you've already got a purple or a black, you can use black for that as well. But mine's a, a kind of a shade of uh, just really dark purple. So here we go. Now, you can decide to paint the edges on your canvas, or if you're, if you're painting on a canvas, if you want, or you could leave them white. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them white in this case, just because. Either way is okay. I just wanna make sure that everything's nice and covered. So there we go. All right. So you guys wanna take about a minute to catch up on that. Again, don't stress, have fun with this. I don't want you guys stressing because if, you, if you're a little bit behind, you can continue with the recorded session when this is all over. All right, yep, you sure can, Lakshmi. You can use pastels. Pastels are perfectly fine. Whatever colors you want, whatever medium you have, you have crayons or colored pencils, you have pastels, uh, you have um, colored chalk, you can have, you have uh, whatever it is, watercolors. Use whatever you've got, okay? But let's see. Let's see. Just running through the comments again really quick. Really quickly here, make sure I didn't miss anyone's questions. All right. And then you do not have to use yellow, of course. You can use whatever color you want for your background. Maybe you want to use blue. Maybe you want to use purple, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Crayons are perfect. There you go. All right. Next little step. Now, I mentioned I've only got my primary colors of yellow, blue, and red. But we've got some green on the, on the bottom there. How are we going to make green? We are going to make green by mixing blue and yellow, okay? Green is considered a secondary color. A secondary color is made by mixing two primary colors. And of course, those primary colors in this case are blue and yellow. So down here where I've got a little bit of yellow, okay? I'm just gonna use that same area, okay? Same brush. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of blue at a time. We don't need much. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab this and mix it into that yellow. Now that's a really light green that I've got there, so I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue to darken it up a, a little more. Once I've got the shade that I want, that's what I'm going to go with. So again, a little bit of blue, a little more yellow to get a nice green hue there. you guys are new, if any of you are new to the page, make sure to stick around. There's lots of fun stuff that happens here, both sessions for kids and sessions for adults. Okay, we do have a exclusive Painting with Jesse membership that's going to be launching in July for those of you that might be interested. Okay, you follow the page and you'll find more details. But all right, there's my green. I like that green. Okay, pretty good color. I was thinking maybe I'd use a little bit of white to lighten it up, but I like it. I like this color of green, so I'm going to keep it. Hold on one second. I added a little bit more blue just to darken it a tiny bit. All right. Beautiful. Now I'm going to take this green, and what do we do? Now I'm using my big brush here for a moment. I'm going to outline the legs and the area between the feet. Okay, I'm using the skinny part of the brush to get right in there between those two feet. And I'm just gonna come in here and here we go. Pretty grass, pretty grass colors. I come right up to my chalk line. I paint right over it here on top. Okay, the line that I created earlier for the horizon line for my grass. I just want to cover that up with paint. Now, like I said, it'll mix a little bit with the paint like it did up here with the dinosaur. No big deal. 
or around the dinosaur when I was doing the background. Okay, there we go. Now acrylic paint, for those of you that are using acrylic paint, if you're not familiar with it, it tends to be a little bit transparent, especially on the first layer. If your paint is really transparent, you can always add a second layer. Once this first layer dries, you can come back, add a second layer, and then your painting becomes a lot more even in color, it becomes brighter, it becomes less blotchy if you have a little bit of blotchiness going on, okay? But all right, take a moment to finish up your grass. In just a bit, we're gonna go ahead and mix the colors for our dinosaur. Again, my dinosaur, dinosaur is a light blue, so I'll be mixing blue and some white to create that nice light blue color. I've also got some orange there on the spikes and the little spots. How do we make orange? Yellow and red. Okay, again, orange is a, is a secondary color because we're mixing primary red and yellow. Okay, so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. I sure am, Kinkini. Lots of uh, landscapes and seascapes. Okay, lots of those, lots of that stuff. So, you know, uh, every month is going to be different, right? We're going to be doing different tutorials in there. So, still working on all of that, but definitely, most definitely. Yep, you can do uh, a light blue for the background. That would be really pretty. That'd be a really pretty color. Thank you, Crystal. Glad you're enjoying it. All right, so our little dinosaur. I mentioned I'm going to keep my dinosaur a um, light blue. Okay, I'm going to go back to my small, my little number four flat brush. Okay, nothing fancy here. I'm going to grab some blue. Blue is a really, this dark blue is a really strong color. And watch what I do. I just grab a little bit and I bring it over to the side of my plate. I don't need a lot. Okay, then I'm going to grab some white. I'm going to bring the white over to the side. Okay, again, we don't need a lot. So I got my white here, and I've got my blue. I'm going to grab a little bit of blue at a time. Uh, you typically will introduce, I'll bring the dark color into the light color, and I do it a little bit at a time. Very quickly, the darker color will start to uh, change, make the change really quickly. The darker the color that you're adding to the light color, the more quickly the change happens. So I just have to slowly add this till I get the color that I want. We're almost there. Now, if I wanted to, I could come over here and maybe make a purple dinosaur, right? That might be kind of cool, but I'm going to stick with my blue. There we go. That's the color that I want. Now, I'm going to take my brush. I dip it into my water cup, bring some of that water over, mix it in with the paint. Water just makes it easier to spread the paint. It makes the paint a little bit more like uh, more a little more liquidy, a little more like ink. Just makes it easier, more uh, make it makes it flow a little bit better. There we go. So now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to outline my dinosaur on the inside. Okay. So always one of the things that I like to do is I like to outline everything first. And again, that purple chalk might mix into my paint a little bit. I'm not too concerned about it. But I am going right up to my chalk line and painting right over the top of it. Here where the feet are, I want to leave those, make sure those lines are apparent. My drawing lines are visible so I know where those lines are when I come in and outline the dinosaur. Okay. But here on the edges, I paint right over my outline. Take your time with this. Don't stress. Enjoy the process, have fun. Remember that everyone's dinosaur is going to look a little different. It's part of the fun. And don't forget to share with me. Send your paintings over to me on Messenger here on Painting with Jesse, or you can send them to me via 
my email at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. And then tomorrow sometime, I'll take all of your pictures and share them on my page. All right. There's my dinosaur all outlined. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I already started doing it. I'm going to go ahead and start painting on the inside here. Yep, we're going to have some, uh, some little dots here. Not dots, but spots that I'm going to put in in a moment. I'm going to add those here really quickly before I paint around there. So the inside of these are going to be orange. Just drawing them in. The reason why I don't want to paint there and then add orange over the top is because the blue, if there's blue, if I'm painting orange over blue, it's gonna change the color into a greenish color. Okay, so I wanna draw in my spots. There's my spots. I'm gonna paint around them. I actually almost forgot and was gonna, I was gonna start painting in that area with my blue, then I would have had to erase. Or I could have decided to make my spots in orange later. And if it changed the color too much, it would have probably been okay. But then the spots probably wouldn't have been very orange. Either way, it would have worked just fine. All right. So all my dinosaur is painted right now, right? You guys all see there's paint on every part of my dinosaur except for where my drawing lines are for the feet, okay? What I'm going to do is really quickly is I'm just going to take my brush and start smoothing out my, my brush lines a little bit. So here, like in the neck, I'm going to use these long brush strokes. Here on the back over the hump, these long brush strokes. Here in the feet, I just paint downwards. I'm just smoothing out the paint a little bit. Here in the tail, long brush strokes from one side to the other. All good. Let me just correct my little spots a little bit. Now the spots don't have to be perfectly circle, perfect circles. It's okay if they're not. Now here, when I draw my little spikes, it's okay when I paint the, the orange over the yellow. That's okay, it's not gonna, that's not gonna make a really big difference. Orange and yellow are similar colors. There's yellow in orange, so it won't make a really big difference to the, to the shade of the orange over the yellow, okay? I am Kinkini, I sure am, okay? I'm going to be uh, painting the outline, not black, I'll be mixing some red, some blue, and um, the yellow to create that dark, kind of a purplish color that you'll see on the uh, around the dinosaur okay you'll see when we get to that point but you can use black black is perfectly fine awesome Shweta fantastic love to hear that love to hear that okay so you guys got about 30 seconds and then we're gonna go ahead and start putting in the orange spots and the orange spikes Once we're done with that, we're going to come over and put in the little, the leaves for the tree. And then the little leaves, we can also add the little leaves around the mouth. And then we'll do the outlining and the, the eye and the eyebrows and the nostrils and everything else. Okay. But all right. So what did I say we're going to mix to make orange? A little bit of red and a little bit of yellow. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my little brush, my little number four flat brush. Okay. I've got a little bit of yellow right here. Same thing that I did with the, with the blue or, or the uh, light blue. I just bring it over to the side of my plate. Okay. So I put a little bit of yellow there. I'm going to take a little bit of red. I'm going to bring it over to the side there. Now we don't need a lot of red. So just a little bit of it, 
a little bit of red at a time. I bring it over to my yellow. And look at that. Makes a nice little orange color. Now, if you want a deeper orange, you add a little bit more red. If you want a lighter orange, you add a little bit more yellow. Okay, so there we go. That's about the color that I want. Now, using my little brush here, I'm going to come in here. I just want to be careful that I don't mix it in with the blue in the background around the edges. I mean, it could. It won't really be a problem, but, you know, just for practice, we'll stay within our lines here. Look at that. Little di blue dinosaur with the orange spots. Now, once you've done that, we're going to come in here and create some spikes. These little spikes are just a bunch of triangles. If you look at each one by itself, it's just a triangle. Okay, and all you're doing is making a little point like that. Two lines that go into a point. Two lines that go up into a little point. Okay, same little brush right here. There we go. Look at this. Okay. There's one spike. Another spike. And we just go like that all the way down the back of our dinosaur. And your spikes can be big or they can be small. It's up to you. It's your dinosaur. Okay. So maybe the last one's a little bit smaller. Something like that. And then we fill it in. Oh. Here's a question that I have for, for all of you, all you kiddos that are painting along. What's your dinosaur's name? You got to come up with a name for your dinosaur. What's, a, what's your dinosaur's name? Let me know in the comments. My little dinosaur's name is Bruno. Okay, my little dinosaur's name is Bruno. Bruno the dino. There we go. Look at that. Okay, once we outline those with a dark color, they're going to stand out more against that background, okay? What's happening, Karina? Karina Melendez, welcome to our little dinosaur painting. Okay, so again, as I mentioned, you always want to take a little step back, look at your dinosaur from whatever it is that you're painting, whether it's a dinosaur or a cat. Um, maybe you're painting a little landscape. You always want to take a little step back, look at it from a distance, and then you can make changes to it. In just a little bit, you got about a minute to catch up to this. If you're behind, don't stress. Again, this is being recorded. As soon as it's over, uh, when I end the video, when it's all done, you can go back and continue working with the recorded session, okay? Stacy, is that your dinosaur's name? That's a cute name. I like it. Okay. So we're going to let all this dry for a moment, okay? What we're going to do right now is we're going to go and create the green leaves here for our tree on the side, okay? So I'm going to go to my little brush. Actually, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to continue with my square brush, little square brush, the one that I just used to create all that orange, okay? This little guy right here, little small brush, okay? I've, I've got some green on my plate still, the green that I made for my ground, right? For that green, the green on the ground. I'm gonna need a little bit more, so I'm gonna mix some more. So what was it again? A little bit of blue, okay? A little bit of yellow. Let's mix the two together. Remember the more blue, as long as it's a dark blue like mine, the, the darker your green is going to become, okay? If you uh, mix more yellow with it, it's more of a bright yellow. It's up to you which, which way you wanna go. But we're gonna make this, we're making the color for our for the leaves right now, okay? All right, there we go. There's my green. Hi, Cindy. Absolutely, Cindy. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, here we go. You can come back, you can come on back and do, the, do it uh, at your own leisure, okay? So here we go. We're gonna start with this long one here. So I'm using the skinny part of my brush. So what I do is this, I'm gonna flatten my brush against the plate so it makes the bristles kind of stick together, okay? Now right in here, 
I'm going to draw a nice skinny line that goes back like this. Okay, it goes back to the edge of my canvas here. Now, you notice here there's lots of little points. So this is how we're going to make those. Okay, we're going to go like this. It's almost like we're making little triangles. Okay, like this, like that. Okay, and then we just paint that in like that. Down here at the bottom, like little points. Okay, kind of like that. When we come in and add the outline, that's going to give our tree a little bit more shape. Okay, so there's one. Another one's going to be right here. Draw a line that goes back like that. And then again, we start with our little points. We just brush back and forth. Down here at the bottom. And if yours looks a little different than mine, again, don't worry about it too much. As long as it looks like like a tree, some kind of tree, you're good. Our little dinosaur isn't picky. It'll eat any kind of leaves that you give it. So if your leaves are a little different, your dinosaur is going to be happy. It's eating leaves anyway. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, while we're at it, actually, no, I don't want to do anything with this just yet. It's not dry enough. What we are going to do is I'm going to mix a dark color here to use for my outlining. So watch this, a little bit of blue down here, a little bit of red. It's going to make purple. Now, if you've got black, that'll be perfect. You can use black. I made a really deep purple, and I can use this to outline everything. However, where's my yellow? Ran out of yellow here. Let me grab a little bit of that. Okay, grabbing a little bit of yellow. Going to bring that over and mix it in. What this does is it creates like a really dark gray color, almost black. Okay. So the yellow, the red, the blue, when I mix these together, it makes almost a black color. It's like a deep blue-gray color. And we're going to use that to outline. But again, if you've got black and you want to use that, or you can outline with a completely different color, up to you. There we go, a little more yellow there. You would think the yellow is going to lighten it up, and it does if you add a lot of it. There we go, that's the color that I want right there. Okay, now, little brush, little skinny brush. First time we're using our little skinny brush. I'm going to grab this color here. I'm actually going to grab a little bit more blue, a little bit more red. This little area right in there. When I add this to my dinosaur against the colors that we have on the can on the canvas now, these are really this is really going to pop. A little bit of water. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my tree here, my little leaves, right down the middle. I'm going to make a line from the point here. We're going to go back all the way over. Okay. Then, and outline everything. When we outline, we make things stand out. Whoops, forgot my little line down the center. Okay, up here. And then down the middle again. All right. I'm going to take some of the same mixture here. And 
I'm going to outline my eye. Okay. I'm going to give my little dinosaur a nostril. And then a little eyebrow. Okay. So take about a minute with that. Remember, we have a little white dot we're going to add to the center or to the top part of our eye that's going to give our, our dinosaur a little twinkle. Okay. So take about a minute to catch up. Let me turn the dinosaur, the original, back towards you guys. So what do you guys think so far? Hope you're having a good time. I know that I am. As always, though, I love doing this stuff. Now, a couple of things. My blue here is a little bit blotchy. Okay. It's a little uneven. Towards the end, we'll look at the time that we've got. Maybe I'll go in and add a second layer of paint. Not sure yet. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. If not, though, if there's no time for that, uh, just know that you can go in there and add a second layer of paint, and then you'll remove that. That gets that changes up really quickly. Hi, Sarah. You can call it. You can use whatever color you'd like. Okay. If another, if you'd rather use a different color for yours, absolutely. For stripes, for dot, for spots, for your spikes. Okay, whatever color you've got, up to you, whatever color you'd like to use. It's your painting, like I said, and I want you guys happy with it. Okay, here we go. More outlining. We're going to start with the mouth right in here. Okay, little mouth has that little line over the top. Okay, like that. Right, you guys see that up close? Then over the top of our little dinosaur. Now here, here, watch what I do. I put my finger right on the canvas here. This is all dry. I can put my finger here and it helps me control my, my hand. It stabilizes my, my painting hand. Makes it a little easier. Another thing I can do is my non-painting hand. I put it right on the table like this. Of course, I'm, on, I'm painting on an easel. And again, that stabilizes my hand. Okay, right over the top right here. Okay. Right here. I'm gonna go over the top. We're not doing the spikes just yet. Also, water, if you're painting with acrylic paint, adding a little bit of water to your mixtures makes it Makes it easier to, to paint with your, mix, it mixes into the paint and makes it a little bit easier to work with acrylic paint. Now, if you're using crayons or watercolors, colored pencils, every medium's a little different. So again, right now I'm just going through and outlining everything on my little dinosaur. The front like this comes across and back. Okay. There's the front now. Oops. So you guys notice I didn't leave enough room for the little leaves that I'm gonna put in the mouth. I'm gonna erase that part, the outline that I just put underneath the mouth. Take a little paper towel with some water in it. Gotta be careful here. Let me remove that. Got to make sure our little dinosaur, our little dinosaur is eating. So I'm going to add that now, the outline of the leaf. Then I'll color it in in a little bit, right here on the mouth. Let me give you guys a close up. So right up on the whoops, too high, right there, right here on the edge of the mouth. The little leaf comes out, has the little pointy things. 
There's the center. Back on the other side. Goes like that. Okay. The one on the other side. What about the one on the other side, Jesse? Don't forget that one. There we go. Same thing. But this one stops right at the chin, right? Because it's on the other side. Okay, there's that. We'll come back and add green in there in a little bit. But for now, let's outline our spikes. Again, don't forget, little finger on the right up against the canvas. Now I know some of you guys aren't painting on an easel. You're on a table. There we go. And my little spots. Whoops. There we go. All right. Using my same little brush, I'm going to scoop up some green and I'm going to come in here and paint in my leaves, my little leaves that my dinosaur is eating. Now, folks, don't forget if you haven't, or maybe I didn't mention it yet, if you haven't yet, please go and uh, Follow my page, both on Facebook and on YouTube. Would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Also, if you share your paintings on your social media, if you share it on Facebook, when you share with your friends, let them know you painted this by painting along with Jesse. Okay. So I just colored in the inside there. All the green little foliage around my around my uh, my little dinosaurs eating, Bruno's eating. I'm gonna take my little skinny brush, okay, a little pointy thing, and dip it into my paint, my white paint. Now I'm gonna go whoop whoop whoop. Lost my brush. Give me a second. Almost landed on my pants. I got some kind of nice pants today. I don't want to get paint on them. So here we go. Back to what I was saying. Little dot. Little sparkle. Okay, this brightens up our little dinosaur's eye, wakes him up, makes him, or her, if your little dinosaurs are her, look like a happy little dinosaur. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Now, again, we always take a little step back, look at our dinosaur or our painting from a distance, make sure we didn't miss anything, okay? Looks like we got everything. And again, I just wanna mention that if I wanted to, if I wanted to make this a little bit more even, a little bit more cleaner, like the original is, I would just take some more of my light blue paint and I'd add another layer over the top. Anything that I would wanna even out a little bit more, make it look a little bit cleaner, I'd add a second or even third layer of paint. Okay, we're not gonna do that today simply because of time, but that's how you would do that. Exactly how you did the first step. When you added the original layer of paint, you'd go over it once it's dried, right? Like right now, all this is dry. I could go in there and add a second layer of paint now. You do wanna wait till it's dry though, because if you paint the wet over wet, it's still gonna stay blotchy on the first layer especially, okay? But uh, so, a couple of things that I like to do. I always like to, sign my paintings when I'm done. I don't. I know I didn't sign the original, but that's all right. I'm gonna take my skinny little brush. I can take some, uh, let's see here, what color should I use? I'll use some yellow, why not? Let's see if it shows up against my green. So I'm gonna sign right over here. Jesse, usually, yeah, it's a little transparent. It's all right, it'll still work. Usually, people like to sign their paintings on the bottom corner, left or right. But some people like to sign theirs towards the top or on the back. 
etc. But all right, everybody, that is the end of our little dinosaur draw and paint along today. You guys have about a minute or two before I end the session. Do you guys have any questions about anything? Hope you enjoyed yourselves. I know I did. It's always fun to paint along with you guys. Don't forget to please send me pictures of your paintings. Parents, check with your parents first, okay? Send me pictures uh, either on Facebook, through Messenger, or you can send them to me directly on my email account, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. And then, like I said, I group a whole bunch of those together and then I do, do a, a big batch share on my uh, social media. All right. But okay, everyone, I don't see any questions coming up. So it looks like everybody, everybody's good. Please do not forget to actually like, if you guys could, make sure you like the video. Put a little like on it, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, put a little like on the video. And then, um, you know, that helps my, it just helps the page grow a little bit. And then, of course, don't forget, there's all kinds of other videos available for you guys to go watch back and watch. If you're interested, you can go over to the live tab on the main painting with Jesse page. You'll see over over 30, probably more about 30, uh, around 35 kids videos that you can go back and paint with. And then the other 75 or 65 or so are more adult oriented, more complex things. But all right, everyone, thank you once again for hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. I will see you guys all very soon. Thank you all. Have an awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye.